Hey guys, it's Chris and I'm back with another writing video. That's right, today we're gonna talk about how to name your characters. I know this is a big thing for a lot of people. It definitely was for me. And it's kind of a big deal for most people who are writing their first novel. I mean, essentially these characters coming out of your imagination are your children essentially, your babies, so you want them to be remembered. So anyway, let's jump right into it. The top five tips I've learned the last couple of years by writing my debut novel, The Crimson Gods. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Chris. I am currently writing my debut novel called The Crimson Gods. Uh, this will be a uh, kind of a fantasy world, a uh, medieval fantasy world with a little twist, I think. So I think something a little bit different than, than your standard, you know, fantasy world, uh, Tolkien-ish type thing. Although there will be certainly big aspects of that. But anyway, if you're interested in something like that, there's a couple of video links I'll have in the description below for some introductions and a prologue reading, etc., as well as a link to an Indiegogo page that for now is just a sign-up page that you can sign up there to get more information on when the book will come out, all that good stuff as well. And you can also sign up to my Patreon page as well, and you can get the same information there, and I'd really appreciate the support. So anyway, let's jump right into it. How to name your characters. Tip number one, make a damn list. Every time you think of a cool name or come across a cool name, write it down somewhere. I know for me personally, I have little notes on my phone every time I'm away from home. If I think of some cool name or I come across one, I'll jot it down on a notepad. I know I have a shit ton of notepad files on my computer itself as far as different names, and then I'll kind of apply those later or maybe alter those or whatever. But every time you come across a cool name, write them down. It's better to have a list there to kind of choose from and maybe even take some of those names and alter them based off what you're trying to do. And as you kind of create new characters, you can kind of pick from that particular list that you thought was cool in the first place. And number two, diversify your names. Now, typically you don't want to have a lot of similar names in the same novel, such as John, Jonah, Jimmy, those things are going to start kind of running together and uh, people will get fucking annoyed. Now, I know there are exceptions to this rule in certain families. For example, George R. Martin, A Song of Ice and Fire, a lot of people know you have Tyrion, you have Tywin, you have Tytos, and he purposely breaks this rule. But again, he is the exception to the rule. You and I are not. Also a big difference there as far as A Song of Ice and Fire goes in George R. R. Martin and his unconventional naming conventions is that he introduces these characters at very different times and this spans over you know many many years as far as these different characters and when they even lived for example so he can get by with it because he's fucking George R. R. Martin. Number three, base your characters names off ethnicity. In the real world names are typically cultural. The neighbor decided to crank his fucking Mustang and move it 10 inches in the driveway. Thank you. So for an example, in my novel, The Crimson Gods, I have a main character named Amari and he has a sister named Abana. She's kind of a side character or whatever, but both of these characters and their other family members are from a place called Athoria and that is based off African lore. So you're not gonna get a Steve, a Johnny, or an Alice that's from Athoria. That doesn't make any sense. Another main character of mine is named Ashea. Now, not only did I think the name just sounded cool, but I went a little deeper with her meaning because of her role in the book. Now, from my understanding from the research I've done on the name Ashea, it is actually Hebrew, but when you translate it into Arabic, it actually means living miracle. So in this case, I put a little more thought and effort into the research and all that kind of stuff, and it actually fits the character herself and what her overall role may or may not be. Now, the other cool thing about a name like Ashea, for example, is it provides me with a nickname. In real life, people have nicknames and they have throughout the centuries. So I can now use the nickname Ash and I can not only use that for her backstory, and in some cases it wasn't necessarily a good thing, but I can also use that as a play on words based off what my story is about. And number four, and this should be fairly common sense, but base your names off the time period you're writing in. If you're writing something contemporary, you're gonna have very modern names such as Caleb, Camden, etc. But if you're writing, for example, in a medieval time period, you're gonna have names like William, Philip, Abigail, etc. Now, of course, this is going to be different a little bit for sci-fi that deals with time travel. So you may have a character, kind of a plain character name like Tom or Tyrone, who travels into the future somewhere when other people have names like Fabius and they're running around named Tom or Tyrone in the future in the year 2034. 
So again, obviously all that comes down to personal preference and what you're actually writing about, but in general, stick to the time period that your book is set in. And number five, names could represent social classes. So ordinary names like Michael or Jimmy may kind of uh, indicate an ordinary or plain character, not really that wealthy, or they're just kind of your average everyday person, so they may need to be remembered for their actions. Now on the other side of that coin, the fancier names may represent some kind of wealth. If you have somebody named Julian or Alexander, obviously that's going to represent probably a little bit more money and a higher social class. And finally, for number six, a bonus tip here, do what the hell you wanna do. It's your story, it's coming from your imagination, your brain, so don't sit there and worry so much about all the strict rules. These are just general guidelines on what people think in general should and should not be done with naming characters. But again, it's your own damn story. So do the research on particular names that you wanna go more in depth with. If you have kind of side back characters that somebody's just having a conversation with, but you're not really gonna see them again, don't make it that big of a deal. Just come up with something that fits the time period. And of course, if you're just completely stuck, you can try these online name generators. I went through a couple of these and I never used any one they actually suggested, but I did come away with a few different variations of some that were suggested. And you can go down through some of these name generators and pick like fantasy and pick dragons and castles and characters and all this kind of stuff, depending on the area you choose or the genre you choose for that matter. And it can come up with some pretty cool names, but some of them are also really, really odd and weird, which may be exactly what you're looking for. So a lot of people don't use these tools, but they're there for a reason. You may get something out of them. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. And again, if you're interested in my upcoming debut novel, The Crimson Gods, please check out the links in the description below and consider joining our Patreon community to support this project. And there will be a lot of free goodies there as well when the book is ready to come out. So anyway, guys, I hope this helps a lot of you out there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.